If you've ever struggled to make simple but significant food changes in your life, my guest today is here to help you. Hey everyone, it's Elise, your kitchen shrink, and you're watching ETV, the place to be to create delicious health and a life you love, and it's Q&A Wednesday, but we have an awesome guest for you today. But first I wanna ask you a question. My cue to you is, have you ever struggled with making simple but significant food changes? Maybe you've wanted to add more greens or more veggies into your lifestyle. Maybe you've wanted to add more superfoods in. And maybe you've started to do all these things, but a week later, two weeks later, you end up in the same SAD, which stands for Standard American Diet, eating lifestyle. And you end up super frustrated and super confused. I know I have been there. So if that sounds like you, you're gonna love today's ETV episode. We have Sophie from The Philosophy who will clear a couple things up for you and share some really simple tips on how to up your food, superfood game. Sophie Jaffe is the founder of The Philosophy, superfood powder blends created from the very best plant-based materials on earth. Sophie works with mothers, trainers, and busy professionals on cleansing and maintaining overall healthy lifestyles. Sophie has also worked with leading actors and actresses like George Clooney, Stacey Keebler, and Gerard Butler, plus many, many more. In 2012, Sophie and the Philosophy was awarded one of the top 50 raw food blogs by the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Sophie's also been featured on media outlets like LA Confidential, Daily Candy, OK Magazine, and E. So thank you so much, Sophie, for coming on ETV. I am so honored to have you, and I just think that we we probably connected, I don't know, maybe less than a month ago. And so yeah. I I don't know, it's just really cool. I think you're absolutely fabulous and amazing and Thank I'm you. glad to have you on. So um, yeah, I'm excited to have you. So let's just get started and, and dive right in. I want to share with everyone um, or I'd love for you to share, you know, what your why is behind the philosophy and um, yeah, share a little bit about your story. Sure. So, um, let's see, 10 years ago I moved to LA and first of all, I want to just apologize for my voice. I'm apparently having some allergy situation, but yeah, so just bear with me and my scratchy, sexy voice. <laughs> um, so I started philosophy, um, a couple years after living here in LA. Um, I lived on the East coast near DC. Uh, I grew up there and the amount of produce and fresh food and farmers markets that are out here every single season just blew my mind and it was something that I wasn't used to. So I I just began learning, I dove right in, I would go to the farmers market every week, get all these new fresh vegetables and fruit and things I had never seen before, I was learning and growing. And then I began working at a juice bar just on my corner as a really great raw food place. And I began managing it after a few months. Then I began managing the group cleanses. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of grew from there. And then I bro broke away um, maybe a year later and just started Velocity on my own because I wanted to work for myself. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how it started. That's the short answer is that I just became more health conscious after moving here, mm -hmm. like growing my awareness. And then I started Velocity shortly after so that I could have more control and um, and more flexibility in what it was that I was doing for my clients. Yeah, and you know, it's so interesting because, you know, you're in LA and I was living on the West Coast too in yeah. Seattle where we had tons of, you know, fresh you know, like farmers markets and co-ops and things like that. Yeah. And it's so different moving back to the, um, you know, Chicago or like East Coast style because yeah. it's really a different culture. And even though there's so much food like everywhere, um, yeah. The amount of it that's processed and just really junk food. I mean, not that there's anything right or wrong or good or bad about it, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's different. It makes it, yeah, it's really different. And it also yeah. makes it really overwhelming for, I think a lot of people to yeah. make some serious transitions unless you're totally immersed in it, which sounds like you were immersed in, in all these, you know, awesome yeah. 
this availability to this fresh food. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really what it's about is convenience and mm -hmm. people want what's convenient. And, um, and that's actually why I created my superfoods is because people that were living in different parts of the country or even the world, people in London, people from all over the world wanted what I had. Mm -hmm. And that was the way, one of the ways that I could share that, um, which we'll talk about. But that, yeah. speaking of convenience, I think that's a huge thing that people um, want when trying to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that gets in their way is that it's just not convenient. There just aren't a lot of inexpensive fresh veggies and fruit so they just kind of skip it and eat something packaged or eat yeah. something less less healthy yeah that's probably one of the i don't you know maybe with your clients too one of the number one things about making time for getting you know whole real fresh foods and you know is the time factor it takes yeah. time to go shopping and to come home and prep and prepare and then <laughs> get ready yeah yeah all that stuff so you know and, and we're talking about today's you know, overview is that it can be, you know, challenging to make sustainable food changes. And so what are some of the things that make, or that you've seen to make, you know, easier, smaller, yeah. I think, I think that's a big key is making it bite-sized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not too overwhelming for the client, for the person. Um, we, I think definitely for me, um, my philosophy or my take on food is that it's there's not one thing that works for everyone mm -hmm. that we're all unique that we all need different things from our nutrition from our food and from fitness from everything we're all unique beings right. we all need something specific to ourselves so it's really important to tune in and figure out what it is that works for you what works for me and what doesn't work for me and then just being really true to that and as you go on you're fine-tuning that and even within that being flexible and open and adaptable because at different phases in your life you may need something different. Some type of food or some way of eating may serve you at different times in your life. Like I've been 100% vegan and I've been 100% raw at different part times of my life and that worked for me at that time. Mm -hmm. When I was in college it worked for me to be totally vegan because of X, Y, and Z. You know, And when I was pregnant and breastfeeding it didn't and so it just it's about being adaptable and not judging and just being open to what is actually best for your body and not what you think you're supposed to be doing because that's what that girl is doing right I think that's so important because we look at so many we look so often we look with you know on the outside about what everyone yeah. else is doing and what's working for them well, that exactly. doesn't always mean that that's going to work for us, and so Absolutely. that's and it not yeah. and it may work on a physical sense. You might be, you know, feeling like you're losing weight or whatever your goal is, like clearer skin. But then if you don't feel good and your digestion is off and it's just not sitting with you and you have low energy and you're fatigued, then it's not working. Right. It needs to work on every level, and you will know. Your body will tell you when you, when you're doing the right thing for you. Yeah, and I think that's so interesting too because. A lot of what I see is, you know, not just with my clients, but just in general, is we want to see, you know, these real tangible results, usually yeah. in the form of a number on a scale right. or a measurement or something like that, when a lot of the times that may come, it very well, you know, right. may come in those forms, but the real true test is, you know, on the inside and how you're feeling. How you feel. Yeah. How you feel. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about your blends. I'm I'm so excited. I want to get my yeah. hands on some. Um, tell us about, yeah, the different types. And, you know, I know that quality is a huge factor for you. And I totally am on board with that as well. But, yeah, tell tell us about, you know, the different types that you have and all that kind of stuff. So, so we have three different blends right now. There's more to come, but right now we have three beautiful different types of blends. And the way they evolved is that I was buying all the ingredients that are now in the blends anyway. So I had all of those ingredients. Each of them have seven ingredients in them. Some of them kind of cross over, like there's maca in most of them, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So there's, there's some crossover, but mostly they're unique ingredients. So if you think about that, there's three different blends, seven different ingredients, there's like that means around 18 to 20 different ingredients sitting in my cabinet. Every time I want to make a smoothie, if it's a chocolate one, if it's a green one, if it's a berry one, mm -hmm. I had to pull them all out, remember what the specific measurement was for that, and then figure out how to like 
integrate them all into a smoothie while it's still is tasting good. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of experience. And I was already doing that every day for years. Mm -hmm. So that's how it organically evolved is that the cacao magic is one that I made anyway whenever I would make a chocolate smoothie. Those are the superfoods that I had to have or it didn't feel complete. Mm -hmm. And same for the Green Dream and same for the Berry Bliss. It just was an organic process where it was the things that I couldn't possibly imagine leaving out of my smoothie or I didn't feel complete. Mm -hmm. So that's how it evolved and um, they all are high in protein. They all have now 10 grams of protein across the board. So each blend serves as a protein powder because it has 10 grams per tablespoon. Awesome. So normally, normally protein powders you use a scoop and that's about two and a half tablespoons. Mm -hmm. So in two and a half tablespoons you have 25 grams of protein. That's, a, um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and, and it's all plant-based. They're all yeah. vegan plant-based, but they're also sprouted. So mm -hmm. they're raw. Um, they're not cooked. There, there's no soy. I really wanted to focus on a vegan protein powder that also didn't have soy in it and wasn't just dead protein, like just a yeah. dead brown rice. Um, our Berry Bliss has a sprouted brown rice, which is raw, has even more protein than normal. And then the Cacao Magic and the Green Dream have um, hemp protein and spirulina as the protein sources. Yeah, I love then, those. Yeah. I love those so much. I mean, and I think that's so important. Um, a lot of people ask me, and I'm sure you get it too, is, well, what kind of protein should I be getting? And should I be doing a protein powder? And I, um, I'm not so keen on, you know, doing these, yeah. you know, they call them medical foods. and you know, getting these pharmaceutical grade types of protein powders that when you look on the back, they've got isolated, you know, whey protein or sometimes pea or, or rice or it's so many different kinds. And to me, you know, my part of my philosophy is, well, if it's made in a factory, it usually has to be broken down in one too. And so why not just put something in our body that we know what's you know it's gonna what, it is. what it's gonna do right exactly and for everyone you know can you explain a little bit about what maca is sure mm -hmm. so maca is an adaptogen it's a root from the Andes in Peru on um, the top of the mountains and it, it it's a root it looks um it looks kind of like a beet root mm -hmm. um just a different color and they they use it historically as a um, as a, in a tea, so they break it down into a powder and then make it brew it into a tea. Mm -hmm. But they'd also eat it and um, and drink it, and they would have it before battle, like thousands of years ago. They would have it before battle, and it would give them the energy and the endurance and the strength, the stamina to go for days and days and days and have nothing else. They would just survive off maca, and it would just energize them. And you feel that, like within. 15 minutes of having a, something with maca in it, I feel it Im immediately. And it's an adaptogen, so there's actually no caffeine, which is really lovely that you don't have that crash afterwards. It's just an adaptogen, so it works with whatever you need. If you are feeling a little lethargic or low energy, it'll raise your energy levels. And if you're feeling a little high, strong, or anxious, it'll ground you a little bit. So that's why I love it so much. Um, yeah, yeah. There, uh, I love maca. I think there's so many amazing things. And same thing kind of with cacao and yep. some of the other ingredients. And, yeah. Um, we have a lot of unique ingredients, which like there actually is no competition right now on the market, mm -hmm. luckily. Um, there, You can buy all of these ingredients separately, like I said, which is where I began, but it becomes a lot more expensive and a lot more complicated. Um, so this is easy. It's just a one-stop thing. You're like, I want to make a green smoothie, boom, here's a tablespoon or two. I want to make a bare one. You can also mix them. So if you want to like get more superfoods into it, I mix them all the time. So but it makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is so easy. I don't know how many times I've looked in my cabinet and I literally have, you know, tons of a million herbs and, um, and then they know. go bad because you're like, Oh, I forgot about that because it was in the back corner, but you're right. not going to forget about it if it's in one bag. Right. Exactly. And so where can you get all of your products from? You can buy um, them on my website, thephilosophy.com. Okay. We sell um, in 40 stores, actually, in Southern California. So you can, anywhere in LA, Orange County, there's you can check out our website and see a list of all the stores. And then we also sell in two juice bars in Washington, D.C. now, which is close to where I grew up. Awesome. Yeah. That is fantastic. So tell me a little bit more about, so you have this why you know, why you wanted to do this, yeah. but then what was more of the, you know, the transformation of how you got it um, up and going and out there to, to the, you know, to the world? Yeah, I mean, it really just, just like everything else, it started really naturally. I just, mm -hmm. um, I started by 
making food in my own kitchen for clients and delivering it or they come and pick it up and um, it just started slowly and then I picked up from there I started having a few private celebrity clients and then we um, oops did you lose me or am I here I gotcha yeah okay um, I had a couple celebrity clients and then I started delivering to a local grocery store pre-made raw food mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I started a website, and it just picked up from there. I, I oops. Why did you keep doing that? <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Yeah. So it just it happened very organically. It just um, grew after having a few private clients, mm -hmm. and then selling to a local to, um, health food store, selling pre-made foods, and then I started a website, and the website was thephilosophy.com, and it's just been growing ever since. I think mostly word of mouth. I think yeah. I have a great community of people that support me, a lot of moms, a lot of families, just people whose lives I've made easier and healthier and they just spread the word just yeah. on their own. I love it and your website is beautiful and um, I, I just love it and so let's talk a little bit about I think when we get on the topic of you know cleansing and detoxes and all that stuff it can be a little daunting for some people it can seem like this overwhelming thing and um, kind of put people into this overwhelm and so what would you say are this is kind of a two-part question but what would you say are the the many you know changes that have to be made some of the you know when we're making lifestyle, sustainable lifestyle changes, what would you say are, are some of the, you know, the five biggest challenges, I would say, to, to getting over the hump and just making it through? Um, okay, so how, basically how to, to make it through a cleanse? Yeah, yeah. And like challenges they might come up with. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really easy to get stuck in old patterns, so. Yeah. We may, we may not even need the foods that we think that we need day to day, but we're just so used to having things the way that we're used to having things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of habitual just desire, we it's hard to break out of that. So I see that a lot as people just want their glass of wine every night or they want their you know, their ice cream every night, but it's not because their bodies actually need it or, or crave it on a nutritional level. It's more that we're just addicted to that that lifestyle mm -hmm. so breaking out of bad habits um, and that can happen within just two or three days you can mm -hmm. break through that Some, sometimes people say it takes 21 days to break a habit but I think it can happen much quicker mm -hmm. um, as long as you're getting what you need nutritionally mm -hmm. so that's a big one um, I think people um, think they need more thing more food than they really do so they're used to like sitting down and eating to like from a scale of one to ten up to an eleven being full and really we feel better and do better when we just eat like a six, seven, eight and mm -hmm. leave a little bit of room so that you can still function and breathe and stay awake. So um, I think that's a big one is realizing that we need a lot less to feel satiated and full and satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What something, other things? Do you I want to say something about that because I think it's yeah. interesting that um, a lot of people, and I always ask people this when, when we start talking about, you know, meals and all that kind of stuff, and um, it's just interesting to me that I always ask, you know, who came up with the three meals a day, two snacks a day? Um, I think that's hard for a lot of people to break out of. Well, I should be eating this way, and um, so... Yeah. I, yeah. Think it come, I think it comes back to learning your own body and what works for you, again, right. like... Mm -hmm. For me, you know, I do, sometimes I do something different every day. It depends if I work out. It depends if what I ate the day before. It depends what I'm doing. Like, I think it's all about just knowing yourself and your body and what you need and then going from there. Like, if you're a person who knows you need three square meals a day, then maybe you, you know, and those are ones where you eat a lot, maybe you don't need two snacks that day. Or maybe you're someone who does need a, a small meal six times a day. And, and just knowing that because you have blood sugar level issues or, you have trouble, you know, keeping your energy levels up, whatever it is, just knowing who you are and what you need and what you do in a given day. Like, if you're an athlete, three square meals might not work for you, you know? Like, you need a lot of post-recovery meals and you need specific ways of eating. And so I would say just work with someone one-on-one -on -one and figure out what works for you and just really you're the best person to learn from because 
you know. So starting a food journal is really helpful. Um, I, that always helps me get out of a bad place and seeing with my clients is just starting to record what you eat and how yeah. you feel afterwards and just becoming, it's just building an awareness. Yeah, exactly. A consciousness and just seeing yeah. what's working, what's not working. And, and yeah. you know, with regards to your blends, are there any that are specific to, you know, like, um, I mean, who, who is it that you kind of cater to? Or is it just, it's not just for cleansing, but mm -hmm. the, Superfoods are for anyone who wants to get extra nutrients into their diet. Mm -hmm. It's for people who want to lose weight, people who want to gain weight, people who want to have it every single day. I eat it every day and it keeps me feeling so good. It, it boosts your immunity. My children eat it every day. Clearly my kids don't need to lose weight and detox. They're just perfect little beings and I want to keep them that way. Yeah. So they need all the nutrients, vitamins, um, superfoods in their diet as they can possibly get so that they mm -hmm. continue being balanced and growing perfectly and um, and I think we live in a toxic world even if you eat a totally clean diet we eat we live in a toxic world so getting really high quality foods in your diet hopefully every day is really important yeah I, it I, really makes a difference I totally agree with you as much as you can kind of detox on like this holistic level because we do. We get toxins from the air we breathe, the water yeah. we drink, the thoughts that we have about ourselves. Uh, it's all yeah. over the place. So I'm, you know, I'm bored with you. Wherever we can get those, yeah, know, detoxing on the daily is, yep. you know, why why not? Right? It'll keep you. It'll keep you feeling good for a very long time. Yes. Yeah. And I love um, all the different combos that you come up with on your website. It's not just to put in smoothies. You can, like, I think you did a pudding last night or you posted something yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, um, you can add it to everything from smoothies to yogurt to oatmeal to ice cream. You can add it to batter for, for baking things. So we make pancakes every Saturday. Mm -hmm. we, we add the green dream to eggs. You know, you can, you can really like use them for anything because they're a powder. Yeah, I was just, I just put on um, Facebook, I was just like kind of asking my friends, I'm like, I, I, ha I made these pancakes, but I want to make them green. And then I yeah. saw your recipe and I was like, okay, I have to totally do that because Done. I was like, how am I going to get some green in there? Because I try personally exactly. to get green, you know, veggies in yeah. every little, you know, meal that I have. So yeah. I'm like, how can I make pancakes green? How and can you, I make them more green? Yeah, that, exactly. That's where the superfoods come in. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's so amazing. And just for people to grab something quick to go, as much as I'm, like, you know, we'd love to live in this ideal world where you can, you know, have chickens in your backyard and you can be right. making your own. I mean, it's just not. We live in a crazy world yeah. and this is our society. So we need to work with it instead of fighting against it. And part of that is creating convenient things that you can take on the go that are really healthy for you. Yes. I love that. I think that that's totally wonderful and it's, it's awesome. I love what you're doing in the world. Thank spreading you. your, yeah, amazing message. Likewise. And it's just so cool, and it's such an honor to have you um, as a so guest. Thank you so much. This is lovely. Yes. Thank you. And I'm just making sure that we um, covered all the questions, but I think we did. And, you know, there's tons of recipes on your website and yep. lots of amazing. I'm always updating them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's amazing inspiration. So go to Sophie's website. It's thephilosophy.com, and she's on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and all that good yep. jazz. So yep. um, come say you. hi. Yes, yeah, definitely. And um, we will post a link where you can get the um, you can purchase the superfoods online. And yeah, we I'm so awesome. so glad that you could come on today to ETV, and we will talk to you soon. So thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now Sophie and I would love to hear from you. What is one simple tip that you learned from this video that you're gonna implement into your daily life? Leave your comments below. Did you like this video? If so, like it, comment, and share it with your friends and family. And for even more juicy insights and tips, plus recipes that I only give out in my weekly email updates, get your buns on over to mykitchendrink.com and sign up. Thank you so much for reading and watching, and we'll see you next week on ETV. Fab Camp is coming soon. Make sure to click the link below to sign up for updates so you'll be notified exactly when enrollment opens. The guest today is going to help. Ugh, never mind. Hold on. It's here to help. Okay. If you've ever struggled to make simple but. Oh.
Ciao und 